Hey, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do this optimization problem. This is the uh, classic open top box problem. And again, it's an open top box because it's easier to set these up so that when we cut out things, they open up and we don't have to worry about the top. If it, we did have a top, it would be a little bit more difficult. But anyway, we have the squares of equal size are cut off corners of a 10 by 12 inch piece of cardboard. Then the sides are turned up to form an open top box. What is the largest possible volume of that box? All right, let's draw what's going on. So we've got this situation here. And we've got a box. And we're going to cut out squares right here, like that, that are x by x. And it says that this is 10 across and 12. So we're going to cut these squares out. And then we fold this up, and when we fold it up, we end up with the box that looks like this. And what we end up having is that this piece right here ends up being 10 minus 2x, and this one will be 12 minus 2x, because we're using x here and x there, x there and x there. So that ends up being a little bit shorter than the 12 and a little bit shorter than the 10, because that x got folded up to be that piece. So the volume... I'll say v of x is going to be x times the 10 minus 2x times the 12 minus 2x. And now we need to come up with a domain for this. Well, the, short, the smallest I can choose for x is 0. If I choose x is 0 and just not cut anything up, well, then I will basically get a volume of 0, but that's the smallest value I can choose in my domain. And I can go to a largest value of x as being 5. Well, some of you may wonder, why 5? Well, take a look. I, can, I have these two pieces. I've got 10 minus 2x, and I've got 12 minus 2x. If I choose x, and I'm going to set these equal to 0. So over here, I'll get x equals 5. Over here, I'll get x equals 6. Well, if I choose 6, that ends up on this end right here being 10 minus 12. Well, I can't have a dimension that's negative, so 6 doesn't work. But if I choose 5, I'll get a 0 here, and here I'll get 10 minus, or 12 minus 10, which is 2. That's fine. I can choose that. So this is the largest possible value I can choose. So what do we do with optimization whenever we're trying to find any type of largest possible, the minimum value, the maximum value, any of those things, we want to maximize this, minimize this, this requires taking the derivative. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. But before we do that, it's probably easier to FOIL this out. So let's FOIL it out first, and then we'll take the derivative. So you end up with v of x becoming, now I'm going to save you all the formalities here, um, and I will just go ahead and do it. This ends up being 120x minus 20x squared minus 24x squared plus 4x cubed. And when you clean all of this up, you end up with v of x being 4x cubed minus 44x squared plus 120x. All right, so let's take the derivative at this point. This ends up being 12x squared minus the 88x plus 120. Well, what do we want to do when we're getting critical points? We set this equal to 0. So let's go ahead and set this equal to 0. I could take a 12 out, or I'm sorry, I could take out a, uh, I could take out a 4, and I'm left with 3x squared minus 22x plus 30. Well, some of you are ask, asking me, uh, okay, well, why can't I at this point just go ahead and graph it and find what the maximum is or find what the minimum is? You, you can, but... If they gave you this problem on a uh, portion where you can't use a calculator, well, then you're going to have to follow these steps. This one, because I made it up real quick, doesn't have clean numbers. If they gave it to you on a non-calculator part of a, an exam, I'm sure it'll have clean numbers so that things work out just nice. So over here at this point, you're going to have to use a quadratic formula to solve this. So we'll write use quad formula. So let's go ahead and do that. And you end up with x being approximately, again, if this was a non-calculator portion, you would plug these into the quadratic formula, and the numbers should come out nice. But because I just made this up on the fly, here we go. x comes out to be approximately 1.8107. And 
5.5226. Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw that one out. Why am I going to throw that out? Because it's not in my domain that I had stated. So we can't use that one. So this is the only one we can use. Now we test this to see if it is a maximum value. Over here I'll get positive slopes, over here I'll get negative slopes, and I'm testing this in V of X, and yes, I end up with a max, a relative max. Alright, so now what do we do? Well, that's not quite my answer. I don't know that's my answer yet. I need to test endpoints. So we always have to test our endpoints, and in this case, I'm going to test V of 0, V of 1.8107, and I'm going to test V of 5. And you put this back into the original. Well, V of 0 just comes out to be 0. V of 1.8107 comes out to be 96.7706, and V of 5 comes out to be 0 as well. So this gives me my maximum volume when I make x 1.8 Eight, one zero seven for a volume that's equal to 96. And did I specify that these are inches? Let's look up here real quick. Did I specify those are inches? Yes, I did. So this is in inches, and this is 96.7706 cubic inches. All right, hopefully that optimization problem helped. Follow these steps and you will do well on all of these.